Peeps and Kevin in the kitchen, soup and biscuits. Yes, today we are focusing on two different things, not one, but two different things that we're gonna make for you. Basically, this is what we decided to have for dinner and we decided, screw it, let's make an episode about it. So, what are we having? Um, I'm making broccoli cheese soup and I'm making southern biscuits. I'm specifying southern for our international friends, some of who live in like Britain and Australia, New Zealand, um, so that we are not making cookies, we're making bread. Um, yes, it is not, not the European style biscuits as in cookies, but you know, the American style biscuits as in, you know, Kind of like a biscuits. scone, kind of like a scone, but not. Yeah, and Abraham's really offended. Sorry, buddy. Abraham's He's offended, European. but he hasn't had dinner yet. All right, so the first step in every recipe, as we all know, is to get our Windsor Canadian whiskey. And we need to pour some in our glass, which eventually will, you know, go on the chef. But they have not contacted us yet at all about sponsoring the show, which I'm a little disappointed about. Um, I believe all my, all of our 118 subscribers as of today should uh, contact Windsor and tell them that they really need to sponsor our show because we love them so much. So, point mm. of order, have you contacted Windsor? We can't contact them ourselves, and Sarah. That we would like to be sponsored. I it's mean... it's like writing in awards in the SCA. You can't. Okay. Okay. You can't write yourself in. That's fine. Um, and while I'm drinking something delicious, Sarah's drinking peppermint. hot ham water. Peppermint tea. Hot peppermint it's water. It's cold. Okay, we're having like an actual cold front. Um, I think it's supposed to be 24 tomorrow. Hours? Yeah, that's usually how most Degrees days work. Fahrenheit. Oh, well, that's different and, then. And, you know, we live somewhere that's really warm. Like the average winter temperatures, I think, are in the 50s. So, um, so what did you do already? Okay, so right now I have giant chunks of vegetables. Those aren't giant chunks. Those are um, pretty giant chunks. It's okay because we're going to puree the soup at the end. <laughs> um, so I have a yellow onion, like just a regular old yellow onion, um, a carrot, and some red bell pepper. And that's going to saute while I prepare... Uh, the other parts of the soup. So the other things that are going to go in this are milk and half and half and some flour and cheese and broccoli. Um, See, I always thought broccoli cheese soup was just like broccoli and cheese mixed together, melted. No, it's not. Oh. Um, so you can make this with, you can make this with chicken broth and milk or chicken broth in half and half um take out some of the dairy and some of the fat your choice um or you can make it with all dairy which is richer and more delicious and since it's the new year you should also take some of the fat out of you get to the gym guys um so the other thing with this is i'm really i have opinions about things as you might have noticed um so, cheese. You can use cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese is traditional. Um, you could use Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack, Gouda, like, you know, you do you. As long as it's a melty cheese and not a hard cheese like Parmesan. Um, hey, Sarah. What? You know what cheese's favorite kind of music is? R and Brie. That's a great joke. That's a great joke. That's, that's a great so joke. I got one more coming up later in the episode. Oh Stick I around. Can hardly wait. Um, so, okay, so if you're in a hurry and you're trying to do this on a weeknight, it's okay. I will forgive you. You can grab the bag of pre grated cheese. Um, if you have the time, though, uh, grating the cheese yourself from like a block of cheese is vastly superior because the cheese doesn't have a bunch of cellulose and binders added to it to keep it from caking up when it gets grated, which, you know, is taking some of the oils and a lot of the flavorful compounds out of the cheese. So in other words, if you do it yourself, that would be... Great! Oh, you're so smart. We're so funny. You're so funny looking. Oh. Uh... 
I keep my vegetable scraps in a bag in the freezer and when it's full I put it in a stock pot with water and make veggie stock. Um, we are using upside down medium cheddar cheese today. What's up? God, there's some Windsor Canadian whiskey right no, there. No, don't put that on the stove. It's not hot on the stove. It's hot on the stove. That's where hot things come from. You keep telling me that the stove is where hot things come from. That's true. But it's going to be okay. Oh, God. I'm going to make a mess. Oh, God. Don't milk. Making a mess is what we're good at. I made the biggest mess today. I wrecked the kitchen. I tried to make French macarons from scratch, like on a whim, and did not realize it had gotten really humid as the front's been coming in. And they were an utter failure and trash the kitchen. Um, I'm going to get out the food processor if you have one. It is the fastest way to grate cheese. You can throw the extra in a Ziploc baggie and put it in the freezer and it'll keep for about a month. Um, now I've been told that it's the food that comes out of a food processor that's really bad for me and I shouldn't buy it. Um, food that comes out of a food processor is not the same as processed food. Sarah, it's called a food processor. You know what a food processor does? Kind of by definition? Makes processed food. That's how that works. I'm so glad I have you here to tell me things. Am I right, people? That's how that works, right? No. I mean, come on. Food processor makes You're processed wrong. food. You're very wrong. That's how can I be wrong? That's how English works. You know what the refrigerator does? Refrigerates. You know what the broiler does? It broils. Which I think broiling is supposed to be like for burning oil or something. I think that's where they got the name. I'm, I can't right now. I probably shouldn't make these really amazing, wonderful, insightful comments while she has a giant knife in her hand. This is not a giant knife. That's giant to me, all right? Sarah, you're blocking yeah. the shot. I slice, I'm slicing the cheese into hunks that will fit into here. So now there's four hunks in the room. Oh! Three there and one here. <laughs> Get it? I'm a hunk? Okay. Holy cow, that's fast. I know. I only ever had a hand grater when I was growing up. Either that or my mom just really wanted me to, like, get some energy out. Assigning children who are kind of being shitty to grate cheese or potatoes or whatever is a time-honored tradition. Mmm. Oh, that's yummy cheese. Mmm. This is very helpful for my Wisconstitution. It is. I was worried about your Wisconstitution getting weak. Mmm. Um, but so that tastes better than... Look at all that grated cheese. That is so much grated cheese. And that tastes way cheesier than grated cheese that comes out Let's of the see. bag, right? Let's see. It also will melt much more nicely. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's going to melt beautifully. Mm. Um, because it has all of its fats in there. And soon all its fats are going to be in me. Exactly. Mmm, fats. So our onions are translucent. Oh my god, you know what I forgot? I have no idea. Hold this. Oh god, I don't know. I uh, got a Christmas present. I forgot to be wearing it. Kevin is a force to be reckoned with in the kitchen. Huh? Huh? Get it? It's tilt it down. A force to be reckoned uh, with? Look at that. Oh, oh god. Your camera is on a different side. Sorry. I got that for him. Isn't that nice? Also, an eight foot long Han Solo and Carbonite rug. Yes! Oh my god, I should show you guys that. Check this out. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay.
I gotta go show you this rug. This is the coolest thing ever. So, in my house we go upstairs for the, to get to my office. And so that door is my office and there's what's laying in the hallway outside of my office. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? My wife loves me so much. Do you like it, Abraham? Do you like the rug? Do you like the rug? It is much more handsome than this ugly green one. Can you feed him? Feeding Abraham. Okay, so it's going to be a threefer. We're going to make broccoli cheddar soup. We're going to make biscuits. And we're going to make poodle dinner. All right, poodle. Come on, who wants poodle, who wants poodle dinner? These right here are really great if your dog eats too fast. This slows them right down. Makes it so they can't eat their food too fast. And there is a perfectly made dinner for a poodle man. Oh, and he's coming through the legs to get it. All right, now Abraham's eating. Okay. So, I'm going to speed this up. So, and I'm gonna microwave our dairy until it's hot before I put it in the pan. Ah! Okay, so I have two cups of milk. And a cup of half and half. Uh, you could substitute chicken broth for the half and half. <coughs> I thought you could only have a half cup of half and half. A half and a half make one whole cup. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. All right, all right. You win the. I win. So I you win the punning. My wife is so punny. Okay. And so the last thing we're gonna do for this until we kind of let that hang out and move on to the biscuits. We're going to use broccolis. Or as we like to call them, mini trees. You're going to need two of the nice size broccolis. About okay. about good good boob size. See, it's it's about, you know, a nice boob size broccoli. Okay. I'm picking the two largest ones. Because who doesn't like large boobs? Exactly. Um, but, like, two big heads of broccoli. Uh -huh. And all I'm gonna do is rinse those off. In case some, you know, animal pooped on it back when it was on the farm. Because people put their gross hands on it in Kroger. That too. And people have poop on their hands. Brought to you by Nurse Pukes. People are gross. Okay, so broccolis. I'm gonna cut their little broccoli butts off. That's their legs, not their butt. I call it the butt of the broccoli. It's... <sighs> what? Which part of the broccoli is not the butt? Broccoli don't poop, Sarah. That should be our tagline for this episode. This Broccoli don't tagline. poop. I... Peeps and Kevin in the kitchen. Broccoli don't poop. So if you want to not puree your soup, like if you just want big hunks of broccoli, you're going to want to cut the broccoli significantly smaller. At this juncture, we're gonna puree ours. Um, Kevin hates the texture of broccoli, but loves broccoli cheese soup. So, I know, I'm a man of contradictions. As long as you're not a man of constant sorrow. I wow, wow, am up, a up. man of constant sorrow. Something, something, I don't remember the I've words seen, to this song. I'm not going to tell you the words to the song because you're going to keep singing it. You're welcome. Um... So, we're just going to set that all aside. 
If you want to, you can chuck up the broccoli legs um, finely and throw them in the soup. They're fine. They taste delicious. I'm being lazy. Um, if your broccoli is really fresh, they're actually sweeter than the, the rest of the broccolis. Cut up any especially large hunks. Now, I did not know this until recently, but apparently broccoli is a man-made vegetable um, from the wild mustard plant. They made broccoli, cauliflower, kale, and a couple of other things, like human... Romanesco. What? Romanesco. How do you know it was Romans? Romanesco is a broccoli cauliflower hybrid that grows in spiny fractals. It's really cool looking. Okay, well, but Americans genetically modified this one plant and made like five or six different plants you know and love and have seen at the grocery store. This has been your interesting fact of the episode. Ba-ding! The more you know. Do, 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 do. And knowing is half the battle. The other half is red lasers and blue lasers. Yep. Okay. Oh, a thing I should mention. Yeah, I'm going to throw this in. And then we're going to dump our hot milk on it. And let it hang out so the broccoli can cook some. Um, so the thing I should mention is that our oven is turned to 450 Fahrenheit. Which is really freaking hot. Um, that is for the biscuits. So the nice thing about biscuits and this dinner in general is that biscuits come together really quickly. They're easy to make, easy, easy, easy. Um, and so like when you've forgotten to make bread or don't have time, you can make biscuits instead. Um, like I was actually going to make bread for this episode from scratch but I forgot to start the yeast and stuff rising yesterday, so that'll just be a different episode. Um, I make a great bread that takes a couple days. Cause right. just like... Now, I want my European viewers who have, who have never eaten an American biscuit before to actually try this recipe. Make some mind. American biscuits, and then like call us or, or write us and tell us how it was. We want somebody who's never had American biscuits before to, to make this dish, send us pictures, and uh, tell us what you thought. So, biscuits, there are a lot of ways to make biscuits. I am going to turn the heat down on this a little bit to kind of medium low or pretty low. That's it's... very low. That's like almost off well, low. Well, okay, so we're cooking with milk, right? And so milk burns really easily. Um, and if you burn your soup, it's ruined, ruined, ruined. And there is no saving it. Is that eggnog? No. Damn it. I mean, I'll put some in a glass. No, I've, I've tried buttermilk before. It is not delicious. Uh, but eggnog is delicious. Eggnog is delicious. It's not what we're making. All right, we're moving over here now. We're moving over here. Bring in the important piece. wash my hands after you handle the thing that's going to touch the food that's fair enough however we're going to make biscuits with our hands i assume we're also going to make it with the roller yeah but the rolling pin was clean my hands are relatively clean i mean like i haven't you need to get broccoli juice all over them <sighs> okay. abraham don't eat your hair Abraham. <laughs> Abraham, no, don't eat your own hair. Come on. Sorry. I finished shaving him, but I haven't, like, picked up his mountain of cool hair. Um, sorry, I'm really thirsty. And there she is putting half and half in her hot Damn. peppermint water. Honestly, we have enough uh, Battlegrounds players watching the stream that uh, they're salty enough. Aww. Muffin, out of the kitchen. 
Abraham. Abraham, out of the kitchen. Come on. Out of the kitchen. Sorry, buddy. Okay. Okay. So, these are really easy biscuits. Ah, oh, butter. How many times is she gonna have forgotten a thing oh, and walk away from the place where we're making the biscuits? This is what I live with. Somebody cooking for you? I'm doing the hard work, holding up the camera, making all the jokes. That's true, I haven't made any jokes. I'm terrible. I'm really contributing nothing to the show. Well, the cooking is important. I mean, people watch it for the comedy, but the, the cooking's kind the of cooking, important too. The cooking counts? Yeah. You're nice. Okay. So, biscuits are easy. But they can be really hard if you make them hard. So. <laughs> or they can be soft if you make them soft. So, biscuits are one of those things that like southern women are supposed to be able to do and if you can't it's kind of embarrassing um so you are going to need apparently a metric butt ton of butter self-raising flour um which is just flour that has the leavening agent already in it um abraham so, that is not for you Abraham does love butter. But. Abraham really loves butter. So we have a half cup of fat, your choice of what you use. Um, you can use butter or shortening or lard or a combination. Um, but one cup? Half a cup. Half a cup. One does that stick, mean one stick? One stick of butter is a half a cup. Okay. So I just kind of cut it in small pieces, smallish. You want it to be cold because you don't want it to melt until it's inside the biscuit in the oven. Um, we were watching this cooking show. On, hold on. Sorry, go ahead. Self-raising flour. Um, I like White Lily. There are other brands that are all perfectly fine, but you want it to be self-raising. Then we're gonna do three cups of self-raising flour. I'm using a half cup measurement. We were watching this cooking show where it was like science versus traditional cooking and they made a steak, and the traditional cook was like this Michelin star chef guy, and I swear to God, he put like 17 sticks of butter. He put so much butter in every, he put at <laughs> least a full stick of butter in the steak. Yeah, it was, it was probably more than that. It made, he put like seven sticks of butter in the mashed potatoes. Yeah, like, it was ridiculous. Like the mashed potatoes were about half butter. Like not even joking, they were about half butter. Okay, so you need three cups of self-raising flour plus some extra for rolling your biscuits out. They see me rolling. They hate it. Okay. And the last thing you need is a cup of buttermilk. So science lesson right now. This does not work if you are not using buttermilk because buttermilk is acidic. And so the acid is gonna react with the basic bicarbonate of soda or baking soda that's in, um, in the self-raising flour. So if you don't have something acidic in there, it's not gonna activate it and the biscuits aren't gonna rise and they're gonna be like sad little leaden hockey pucks. Um, not all stores carry buttermilk. I don't know if it, how available it is um, outside of the Southern United States. So if you do not have buttermilk on hand, because most of us don't keep it around, I definitely don't. Abraham, Can leave it. Just come outside. Come on, let's go outside. Go potty. Peace out, buddy. Okay, so you can make buttermilk out of milk. Um, so for every cup of milk, you add one and a half tablespoons of an acid like vinegar or lemon juice. Um, you know, apple cider vinegar is fine, white vinegar, not balsamic. So, crap. What? I should not have done that. What? Put the buttermilk in. Damn it. So, 
you're supposed to use your pastry cutter and cut the butter into the flour until it resembles a coarse meal. Get the fat all distributed. Now this is an experiment. So you're supposed to do what you're doing now before you add the buttermilk. Yeah. Experiment! Yay! This is about to be super bad. I kind of wish. Oh well. So while I'm ruining biscuits, um, will this be our first real peeps and Kevin in the fail? There was that time I made corn soup and like halfway pulled the immersion blender out and exploded corn soup all over. That wasn't really a fail. That was a funny. I don't think we failed a dish yet, have we? No, we've all our dishes have Not been really good. Camera anyway. I mean, I definitely screw up. Like I already screwed up macarons today. Um, so normally you would sit here with your pastry cutter and cut the fat into the flour until it's kind of... What if they don't have a pastry cutter? Um, you can use a fork to mash it together. Don't use your hands because you don't want to heat it up. Um, I don't know. This is... Oh, buddy. Uh, this is totally a mess. Um, we're gonna find out what happens. Um, it can't be, it cannot be worse than the biscuits I made early on before I found this biscuit recipe. So before bread was a, like sliced bread, you know, that was had good shelf life and kept Biscuits were kind of the bread of the South, and so people would make them for breakfast and again later in the day for dinner. Um, I just dropped this kid on the floor. That's Abraham's shoe. That is, this is definitely Abraham's job. Um, so people would make biscuits. So I've seen women make biscuits, and they have just like this big bowl of flour, and they take kind of like a handful of lard out of a lard bucket like an actual bucket of lard. Um, that was my nickname in high school. Right? Samesies. Um, and they'll just start kind of like cutting it together with their little thing and start dumping in some buttermilk and they mix it around with their hands and they have like magical biscuit dough in the middle of this lard bucket um, <sighs> or this pile of flour. Come on. And I don't know how it works, but there they are with their like, this is not. This is gonna be. Oh, what a lovely sound. Oh, my sound, the biscuit dough was way too dry and it wasn't taking up the last of the flour. Um. Maybe we should just like stop filming and be done. No! no. We need to show people that even the professionals fail. Oh god, fail. I mean like probably you have a pine needle on your nose. Um overall, like I don't know if I Didn't you need some of that for the table? For dusting? Eh. I mean, we can use regular flour for dusting. Since I'm kind of making biscuit dough by braille today. <laughs> Can you stir the soup real quick? Yep. Thank you. Oh my god, that lid is so heavy. Do you need to go to the gym? I really need to go to the gym. All right. How's it doing? It, still liquid with big chunks of vegetables. In. Okay. Um, can you get me the jar of flour? Where's the jar of flour? Really? That one. I don't know. How am I supposed to know where the jar of flour is? How often am I like, man, you know what I really need right now? Flour. flour. Like, never. <sighs> not once. But you should still know where it is. Which one is it? One of them sugar. The one that's not sugar. 
Which one's sugar? I think the one on the left. So this one, by process of elimination. Look out. Can you put the lid on the buttermilk and get it off? Get it off? I'm, it's not that kind of show, oh, man, Sarah. I forgot to put the salt in. <laughs> you forgot to put salt in the thing? I There's supposed to be salt in there? Yeah. I we can add it. We can, we'll roll it out. Add some salt, then, like, fold it. Okay. You can either get a spoon or use your hand, but get some flour and sprinkle it on the other counter. We'll get a spoon. That's good, because I have a spoon you wash your hands since we've been done. Generously sprinkle flour. Woo! More generously flour. More generously. Woo! And can you flour on top? Stop. Oh. I was having too much fun. You were having too much fun and not being even. So we're going to knead our biscuit dough. Uh, I really need it. I need it. Like 10 or 15 times. Do you want to add some salt? Together. It's not going to be worked through. If Will, if you add it before you... Never mind. I'm just trying to help. We're not needing it that much. I need it. Okay. Oh, wait, I already made that joke. You did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I really hate making things with my hands. Okay, so we're going to get our rolling pin and roll this to... About half an inch thick. A third to an half an inch. Um, I have to wash my hands. So I can't. All right, who's got a ruler? Yeah, it's between a third and a half an inch. Because you're cute? I'm not cute. You're very cute. I'm ferocious. Did you dye your hair? Yes. I told you I was dyeing my hair today. Did I not? No. That's four things she's forgotten now, I think. I'm tired. I gotta... Now, for you calligraphers out there, this is not the kind of parchment you, like, make scrolls and proclamations on. It is not that kind of parchment. Um... It's the kind you put on your terrible cookie sheets. Damn it, Sarah. <laughs> we are not having a good episode, ladies and gentlemen, and that's okay. That's okay. We are allowed to have bad days. We're allowed to have screw-ups. We're allowed to make mistakes. And that's okay. That's part of life. If I don't burn the soup at this point, it's going to be an absolute miracle. Like, we are... We are cruising for a delivery pizza at this point. Abraham, get out. Abraham knows that the butter wrapper is sitting on the trash. We need to get it. Um, and Abraham loves butter. So we're going to use a biscuit cutter because I have them. If you don't have them, um, you can just use like a, a glass to cut them out. The reason that... The top of the glass, not the bottom of the glass. Thank you, Kevin. So the reason we do cut biscuits and not drop... Um, is that cutting the edges open leaves all this room for the biscuits to rise and come up. Um, 
when they're drop biscuits where you just like drop them off of a spoon. There's no room for them to do that so they don't rise very high. So if these work out right, like they normally do, they'll go from being a half an inch to about two, two and a half inches tall. Um, and then I get really lazy on the second part and just kind of spank it into a half an inch. Um, that one's way thicker than the others. Okay, well, now it's not. Good job. So if they're touching, it can help them raise more. I don't know why. Um, I should find out why. I wish I knew why, but I don't know why. But like if you put them all in one big pan, they'll get really tall. Oops. What a great sound. Clearly, I'm a professional biscuit maker. Um, And we'll take the last of it and make one drop biscuit so you can see the difference. So we're gonna come over, we're gonna take these and we're gonna put them in our 450 degree oven. Um, so if you make little bitty mini biscuits, they're gonna take eight to 10 minutes. Um, medium size, kind of 10 to 12. These will probably take 12 to 15 minutes to bake. So, um, and if you've never had biscuits, which is really hard to get my head around, um, they're buttery and light and fluffy. But apparently not salty. <sighs> they should be salty. I can't believe I left the salt out. It's okay. There's salted butter in there, so there's some salt, but they would taste better with, you know, salt, salt. How much? Um, a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon, depending on your taste. I totally use like a teaspoon. Okay. <clears throat> We're gonna start pureeing this. And this is going to be my stick blender redemption. This is my incredulous face. You're going to not get any soup. You're going to have to eat like Hot Pockets and cry. At this rate, we're going to have to order a pizza. I haven't burned it yet. Yet. Yet being the operator. Is that cord from the 40s? No. Why? I don't know. It looks old and... Discolored and That's it's probably because you spilled so many things on it. <laughs> I forgot the flour. There's supposed to be flour? You're filming my butt too, not the actual thing. Yeah, there's supposed to be flour to thicken it. Stop filming my butt. I'm filming my butt. I can't see what I'm filming. like the home movies that your dad films where he like is forever filming your mom's butt. I'm not going to comment on my mother's butt. She does in the videos and she's like, stop that. It's adorable. Because it's not my parents. I mean, it is my parents, but it's not my parents. We could also be sponsored by the blender people. Who are the blender people? Uh, Brown. Brown? You heard that, guys? God. Sponsor us. Bless it. What? I did just, just a little bit, not like I did with the corn soup. 
comes to your personal preference, you can stick it in your actual normal beer. I like it liquidy. I do like liquidy. Okay. Now do we add the flour? Hold on. You might have noticed we have not seasoned this yet. It's uh, winter. So we're gonna put some black pepper. I'm gonna put some seasoned salt in because we love Lowry seasoned salt, but normal salt totally works too. Don't get too crazy with the salt because the cheese is salty. Um, the cheese will thicken it up some. Okay, so how much cheese to put in? All of it. No. No. Uh, please? So, at least a cup and a half, preferably two cups, maybe more, I don't know. Hey, Sarah? Yeah? You know what kind of che cheese is made backwards? Um... Eat them. Pause, wait for people to get it. There you go. That's a funny joke, right? Okay. So we're gonna start in the cheese and this is the part where we're gonna let it melt for a few minutes. Um, still watch your heat, I can feel that it's it's not burnt, but it's starting to get kind of like, there's a weird milk film on the bottom. I can feel that tells me we're in the danger zone. Right into the danger zone. Okay, so come look at this. I don't think that this needs flour to thicken it at all. Um, it's in my original recipe. I feel like if you use chicken broth, the flour helps because it's not as thick as milk or half and half. But this is plenty thick. It might help it be a little bit more cohesive, but no big deal. Um, if you forgot the flour, you could use some... You could put Who some would forget the flour? <sighs> Only an idiot. Um... You could use, you could put some flour in and just let it cook for a little bit longer on low so the flour has time to cook down some. Um, you could also take some cornstarch, like maybe a tablespoon of cornstarch and mix it with a couple tablespoons of cold water in a dish and dump it in and let it cook for about five minutes and the cornstarch would thicken it up and help it be cohesive. Um, potato starch, tapioca starch, whatever starch you have handy, but not like laundry starch. That's probably... Don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. Not delicious. So we're going to go ahead... Don't we need more cheese? Hold on. We're going to let it do its thing. I'm going to taste it. And we're going to see if it needs more seasoning, more it cheese. It needs more cheese. What? That's like... It needs more cheese. I already put in extra cheese. I know, but you didn't put it in enough. It won't be soup. It'll just be a solid mass of cheese. Yeah, now you're getting the point. Just put the buttermilk in your cheese. I'll butter your biscuits, mister. I'll buddy yo biscuit. So glad you're never creepy. Hey Sarah, this should be the, the thumbnail for the episode. <laughs> this is hot. It's from the place where hot things come from. Mmm. Okay. Needs more cheese?
cheese. Definitely needs more cheese. Yeah. A lot more cheese. It's really strong on the broccolis. Really strong on the broccoli. It's like broccoli soup with a little cheese. Ah, the hell with it. It's New Year's. Yay! It's New Year's. Um, normally, this does not have a pound of cheese in it. It does today. It does today. It's New Year's. Like, ten years ago, I am pretty sure I was in, like, some bar with a really high cover charge and flown in DJs from, like, LA and Tokyo and London getting super drunk wearing something fancy with my friends. And now I am making broccoli cheese soup for New Year's Eve, wearing pajamas, hanging out with my husband and my poodle. On your, you're in your husband's YouTube channel. Mwah. Aww. It's super glamorous in here. It is. One day we're going to be famous. This Peeps is, and Kevin in the Kitchen is going to be right after Regis and Kathy Lee. This is almost as fancy as having, like, bottle service and $1,500 handbags. Almost. <laughs> still have the hand back. I got you it on need sale. to sell that? No, I got it on sale. Did you just smell what you pulled out of my hair? No, I showed it to camera. What was it's it? It's a television. I don't know. It was a little thing. <laughs> You're so weird. But no, it's the, the okay. people at home want to see this, Sarah. <laughs> We're so sorry about tonight. I'm so sorry. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah? Better? Let's try it. When in doubt. Add cheese. Come on. Come on. So glad I mopped today. Needs more cheese. No. What? It's a, it's a bit... It does not need more cheese. I can still taste the broccoli! You're supposed to taste the broccoli! No, you're not! It's supposed to be a way for Wisconsinians to eat vegetables without having to taste vegetables. I'm putting some cayenne in. I feel like it needs a little more salt. You know who's really good broccoli cheese soup? Panera bread. I can't eat theirs. Theirs has chicken in it. Ah, oh, wing sauce. I know. Did you know that they don't make their soups fresh in the store? How dare they? They come from a factory in bags and they stick them in a big pot of boiling water and reheat them. Can we order one of the bags? No. Also, their prices are ridiculous. There's a really amazing local place that I had lunch at today and their prices are amazing. They are amazing. I know where you had lunch today. Cause... But they have, one of the great things about this restaurant that I had lunch at today is that they pay their servers a living wage and then there's no tipping. And I love that. They don't pay a server's wage, which is what, $2 something an hour? Yeah, no, they, they pay, pay an actual, like, living wage, well above minimum wage. It's not, I don't think it's actually, like, an actual living wage, but, like, it's good. Like, I think it's about what I make being a secretary. It's it's above, well above minimum wage. Um, and uh, and uh, there's no tipping, and it makes things so much easier. I love restaurants like that. If you're a restaurant person, please, please do that. Don't do this whole serving wages plus tips crap. That's a load of bollocks and you know it. It was the worst. When I worked rest in a restaurant, it was the worst. And people had to tip out to, like, front of house, like, the, um, the hostess. I was the hostess. I didn't realize everybody resented me because I didn't know I was getting part of their tips. It was horrible. Can you put this back, please? Where is it? In, in the, the just fridge. Okay, it's in the fridge. So... Uh, wrong, wrong, wrong! Uh, Are you gonna take the biscuits out of the oven? Well, they're not... They're not quite where I want them. Did you look at them? I looked at them. Well, show me. Okay, come down here. Are you down there? Can y'all see that? So, they're not quite brown yet. I think that's that's good. That's, no, That's no, where they're supposed to be. No, undercooked biscuits are really gross. I like undercooked biscuits. No, you like underbaked cookies. Same you thing. You like underbaked brownies. These are not the same thing. Damn it, now I have danger zone stuck in my head. 
I'm so sorry. Right into the danger zone. I'm gonna get you singing lessons. K-Log is the best. Actually, if you haven't uh, checked it out yet, um, they put uh, the version of Danger Zone from Archer, the the cartoon. Uh, there's one in season four or five of Archer. There's a scene where one of the people from the show sings a duet version. It was like a country music duet version of Danger Zone with Kenny Loggins, and it is awesome. Uh, I downloaded it from iTunes or one of those services, and it's just hilarious. Tell them about the letters. Ask them to ask us. Oh, yes. Um, our next episode, hopefully, is going to be a uh, Ask Peeps and Kevin in the Kitchen episode. So we need your letters. So send us letters asking us questions about the show, about cooking, about whatever, and we will answer them in our next show, which will be nothing but answering these letters and uh, let it, giving you guys the information we know you need, we know you love. That's not our next show. Whatever. It, it, I'm excited about our next show. One, two, our friend, three. Our friend Maddie is coming. She's coming in from San Francisco. And she said she wanted to make bangers and mash or a veggie curry. And I don't have a great local sausage maker that could do like a turkey version of something fantastic for the bangers portion of bangers and mash. So I think we're going to do a veggie curry. Um, and we, I test cooked it last week and it was so good. So yeah, it was really good. Kevin hates rice, and Kevin was excited about rice because it let him eat more curry. It's not that I was excited about the rice. is that the crappy rice was covered up by the amazing curry. I don't like white rice. What? I love yellow rice. I love fried rice. I like lots of kinds of rice. I just don't like white rice. Oh. Only one of those is an actual kind of rice. You know what else is a kind of rice? My face. Your face! Is it my face? It's your face. I knew it was my face. Okay. Okay, the biscuits are done. Remember to turn your oven off. Turn off the oven light. Okay. So. That's what biscuits are supposed to look like. Okay. Those are pretty looking biscuits. So look at that beautiful biscuit right there. It's a beautiful biscuit. I just washed these today. So these are nice and tall. They're separated into layers. This is what we want. Did you turn the light off? Yes. No, you didn't. Hmm. I pushed the... No, we didn't. Okay. okay. And then so, compare that to the drop biscuit, which is different. It did okay this time. Last week's biscuits, the drop biscuit was really short and the other biscuits were really tall. So like, they're okay, but they get taller and better if they're uh, cut biscuits and not drop. Anyway, so we're just gonna plate this up. We're gonna eat our dinner. We're gonna not set everything on fire and melt it, maybe. Maybe. I doubt that. I doubt it. Um, so, we're just gonna ladle some of this up. If you wanna get super fancy, you could put this in bread bowls. Um, bread bowl is a bowl made out of bread. Very toast. simple. Toast your bread bowl before you put the soup in it and it will hold up better and not fall apart. Um, yeah. And then you serve your biscuits with butter. Um, you can serve it with butter and jam. Yes, for those of you who don't eat American biscuits yet, you can have biscuits with just with butter. You can have them, you can put jam on them, you can put honey on them, you can put like white gravy on them, you can put lots you of different things put, on biscuits. You can also put savory stuff on them, like a fried egg and bacon or ham and cheese. McDonald's um, does that. Sausage. So, biscuits are very versatile and delicious. Kevin eats all of the biscuits. I like biscuits. Him. Everybody likes biscuits. Um, I mean, if you wanted to get super fancy, you could like... Sprinkle a chiffonade of parsley on that. All right, but yeah. this has been our by far because it's a crappy cell phone camera. This is why we need new cameras. This is why, if you'd like to financially oh my support God, has this been an hour the stream and uh, you know help us get a new camera so we don't have to record this stupid show on our damn cell phone, uh, the uh, way to donate is just right down there. It's right below me. Okay. Anyway, we.
we want you to enjoy the stream if you can't donate, but you know, if you can help us get a, a better camera, that would be lovely. We love you. Anyway, so love that you. is uh, broccoli cheese soup and some biscuits, a twofer in by far our longest episode I'd yet. I'd like to point out that this is the last day of 2017 and this is the most 2017 episode. <laughs> As failures? Just kind of a dumpster fire. No, we but didn't actually have a fire we're yet. We're alive at the end. Yeah. We're alive at the end. So, if you're, if you're out there, guys, we love you. Stay alive. We'll see you next time on Peeps and Kevin in the Kitchen.